is beekeeping is kind of one of those things that there's a little bit of science behind it, but there's a lot of like getting that gut feeling and you know figuring out what your bees need. So every beekeeper has a different opinion about how to do things and when to do things. So if you have any beekeepers in your field, you might be like, oh well, so and so said, and I'd be like, yeah, but my bees like this. So <laughs> first thing I wanted to tell you um, is how you get a package of bees. So the reason you have, the reason I have to get packages of bees is because every year my bees die. Every year I have at least six hives and every year over the winter they die. And it's really, really sad. So every year I get to get one of these packages. And in this package, there is a queen. She is inside this little package here. And inside there is also two worker bees that keep her, help to keep her alive during the trip. All right, so this is closed up. On both ends, there, there's candy. And what happens is you take the queen and you hang her inside here. And then they're closed. And she's in there waiting, all right? Whoopsie. This is a container of syrup that they put in to keep my bees alive while they're on the way here. It's really amazing because the holes are so tiny for them to drink out of. You can't really, you can't find them, they're that small. And then inside this box are 10,000 bees. Three pounds of bees. And if you're really lucky and it's a nice, warm, sunny day, you get to take the bees. You have like a, the hive is here and you have like a landing board and you take it and you shake the bees out. And that was pretty, the first time someone told me to do that, I was like, what? How are they gonna know to go in the hive? But because the queen is in there, they march right in. It's such a beautiful sight. So now you have the queen in here, and the bees are in here, and the bees eat the candy from the outside, and the worker bees on the inside eat from the inside until they get the queen out. The reason you want that to happen is, this queen is a part of their family. Somebody has just taken them, taken her, and um, taken her someplace else, shoved her in there, and put her in the hive. So it takes them a while to get used to her. If you don't do that process, if you were to let her out right away, they would kill her. Because they don't know her. All right. Now we're going to talk about the hive. This is called a deep. And this is where they raise their brood. This is what it looks like. You can pass it around. When you first get it, there's no wax on here. Kind of smells like wax because they put a finish on there. Hey, Lexi, you can move it from table to table if you like. No? Okay. And then what happens is the bees end up putting wax on it. So this one's kind of pretty. They build it up. This is a really pretty color. It's not a very old. Oh, so I've been doing beekeeping since 2012. So, unfortunately, some of my frames look like this. It's not good. I have to scrape all these down so that I can, they can build new frames. Because as this frame gets old and filled up with propolis and stuff like that, it, it gets smaller and smaller and the bees won't use it. So, this is a beautiful piece. And this is where they raise their babies. So, during the winter, what happens is... You leave this one box, and the queen at the end of the season raises special bees that will make it through the winter, because we all know how long do bees live? What? Oh, they, they don't live very long. They live about three weeks. But she makes special ones that live through the winter. So I remember I told you how my bees died every year. So I'm gonna pass this around, and you can see that there are dead bees inside here. Every year, for how many years, I take my hives apart at the end of the winter, 
and I go in here and I pull all these little dead bees out. That's another, some people would just leave them and make the bees do it, but I can't do it because it would take so much energy for them to do that. So I do it for them. And this is some brood that did not get hatched out before the winter came. So as I pass this around, you can look at dead bees and what the brood looks like. Pretty interesting, right? It's curtain tail, a brood is what again? Oh, the babies, the first five in. Okay, so this is the deep where they're raising their family. And this is called a super, which is where they put the honey. Same principle, it's starting out, they've got to start and build comb on there, put the honey in. It takes so much energy and effort for them to build up this comb. But look at this beautiful comb. So you remember what I told you about not having any bees making it through the winter? Guess what happened this year? I had three hives make it through the winter. Oh, yeah, to about three weeks ago. I had a little visitor. Well, it wasn't really a little visitor. It was about 300 pounds. Can you guess what animal did that? A little bear. A bear. <laughs> yes, that bear took my hives apart. He actually took one of these whole, you can pass that around if you want. Took one of these whole boxes, took it into the woods, and probably just sat there and did this with it, broke a bunch of them apart. It's very sad. I beat up that bear. Well, so we um, put the guys back together, and he came about three days later. And did the same thing. How oh, dare you? So then I just packed all my bees up and I moved them to Madison. I live in Thompson. I moved them to Madison. Last night I finally brought them back home. We put up an electric fence, and they're back home. And I'm really excited because has anybody seen any bees around lately? No. Actually, yeah, bumblebees. Yeah. Not bumblebees. So that's what I noticed. When my bees were in Madison, I didn't have any bees on my um, dandelions. So what does that say to you about bees if nobody's seeing them yet? Because think about what's out there. What's that say to you? Population. Mm -hmm. Because what, what's, what's happening now is all the trees are blooming. Dandelions should be full of bees. Kind of sad. All right, so I know you guys know that the bees are in danger, you know, from pesticides and habitat destruction, um, air pollution, global, global warming, but this is one of my arch enemies. It's a mite. See how big this bee is? Yeah. This is that mite right there. So I'm going to pass this around so you can see what that mite looks like. And I think that's why I haven't been able to um, keep these alive because of the mites. So this year, I was very aggressive with my treatment, all organic, of course, but I treated more than I'd ever treated before. How do they get the mites? So you have, you have to treat, treat it um, when, when it's outside. Like before I put my package in, I treated it with acetic acid. Um, and then... Uh, Unfortunately, I can't. There's only two other treatments that you use, but the other two are ones that actually go into the brood cells because that's where the mites start. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, when you don't get on top of that, what happens is what happened to my friend in Mentor when they called me and he said, Helen, my bees are walking the line. And I'm like, what, what does that mean? He goes, they're not, none of them are flying. They're all just walking along the driveway. And I'm like, oh my gosh, go out and look at them. He went and looked at them and all their wings had been chewed up by mites before they're even born. <coughs> the mites damage them before they're even born. So you have to use a treatment that can go in into the cells to treat the mites while the bees are growing. So, um, Caring for bees just means that you, thank you. you watch them. The reason you have to watch bees is they're real particular about their space. Do you know that about bees? Yeah, 
they don't they don't like to be crowded they like like all this spacing that you see all these things are created to make the space a certain space so if they feel like they're they're too crowded they're going to make another queen and then they're part of the hive is going to leave they're going to swarm has anybody ever seen a swarm i think so I just for the first time saw one last summer and it was amazing to me. Well, I take that back. I've seen swarms because I capture swarms as part of what I do, but I've never seen one actually fly through the sky and group up in a tree. So that was pretty impressive to me. Ms. Kurt, and they, all, and they do the swarm, are they like, are they picking a new queen? They are, they've already made a new queen. So that's like their symbol that they're going and they're yeah, so that, that, yeah, that's part of what you're taking care of your bees is watching to see if they create um, queen cells which um, are bigger than the other cells. So you can kind of see when you inspect your hive. Um, I don't know what I'm saying. But how many bees are in this one? It depends because it, you, they usually take about half the hive with them. So it would, it would depend on how big your hive already is. And sometimes they make more than one queen, so then you'll have more than one swarm going out from that hive. But the good news is, when, it, when a hive swarms, it's the calmest they're ever gonna be. When you see those pictures with people, with bees all over them, oh, yeah. kinda like that, like because they're not protecting brood, they fill their bellies up with honey before they leave, and in the middle of that cluster is their queen. So they're as happy as can be. So if you see a swarm, you never have to be afraid of it. You're not going to do anything to you. So part of that, part of the why the bees are in danger, is um, because we're 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 not providing a lot of um, native plants. Like a native plant is a plant that um, pollinators and native plants have evolved together. So the native plant has things that are good for the bee to eat. So it's really happy because this, our, our um, person in charge of the government, <laughs> who is it? I just, governor. governor, just announced that April was Ohio Native Plant Month. So I mean, that's huge because hopefully that's gonna encourage people to go out and get native plants for their gardens and so that the bees actually get what they need. Having other plants, they can eat, they can use the stuff that's in the other plants, but it's kind of like you. If you eat a bag of potato chips and a bag of candy, yeah, that's gonna keep you alive, but it's not gonna be good for you. It's not, it's not something that's gonna help you survive, right? So that, check it out, the native plants, it's really important. And we touched on a lot with invasive species, which is the opposite of native plants. So all those things that we learned about, about invasive species coming into an area, that's why you want to plant things like native plants in that area, because you want to bring the things that are naturally here, rather than, you know, allowing things that are not supposed to be in, in the environment and turn the ecosystem. There's a couple places around here um, that actually just sell native plants, so you can check that out. Okay, one of the questions, why are bees yellow? Hey, thanks for putting those questions in. They kind of let me go and do a little investigating if I didn't know the answer, so that was kind of fun for me. I didn't know why bees are yellow. Yellow and black are warning colors to keep enemies away from the bees and their stingers. I didn't know that. Did you know that? Okay, so part of why I like to do this bee talk, you can pass those out, is I have, a, I have a real problem with people not understanding the difference between yellow jackets and bees. I can't tell you how many times someone's called and said, oh my gosh, I, got, I have bees in my attic, and I'll get there, and there'll be yellow jackets. I don't want yellow jackets. Do you guys know any of the differences between a bee and a yellow jacket? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yellow, um, yellow jackets are a lot more aggressive and they can sting over the yellow. They bite. Oh, they don't actually sting, they bite. Uh -oh. Yes, they are very aggressive. Anybody else know a difference? Nobody. Oh my gosh. See, this is why, this is why. 
Um, so I brought a little bee friend with me today because when I was I was moving my hives last night, I ended up with a casualty. So I'm going to spin this around so you can see how cute and fuzzy this little bee is. It's so cute and fuzzy. But I'm also going to send these pictures around because this is a bee in yellow jacket so you can compare. Lexi gave you a bracelet so that you can say to someone, I learned about this today. If you want to tell them a bee fact, if you want to tell them the difference between yellow jackets and bees, so that we can keep people talking about bees because they're really important. Okay, so pass those around. Um, really, the big difference is the yellow jacket is more, has a lot more yellow if you ask me. And the bees are just, they're cute and fuzzy. <laughs> okay, somebody asked, why are bumblebees so big? Well, I couldn't find the answer to that. Nobody really had a reason why that happened. But as long as we're talking about bumblebees, what's the difference between a bumblebee and a carpenter bee? Yes. Yeah. Don't. Doesn't a, a bumblebee like does the pollinating stuff, but carpenter bees just kind of exist. No. Yes. You were at your bees alive. What? It's alive. Yeah, it's alive. It's alive. Yeah. Yeah. Just, okay, I'll just take it home and put it by the hive. It's alive. 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 It looks like it's about a dog. You might need an air hole. Well, they might be bigger, but I don't know that fact. The difference is the bumblebee is warm Roger. and fuzzy. Yeah. Roger. I don't think so. The bumblebee is warm and fuzzy, so when you look at the abdomen, if it's shiny, it's a carpenter bee. All right? I really don't like carpenter bees because I have a cedar-sided house and they put lovely holes in it. But they are also so effective in pollinating my blueberry bushes that I can't get rid of them because I need them, right? I wish they wouldn't eat my house, though. That's okay. Okay, another question was, how do we see? I, I really didn't know the answer to that one either. So, um, Wait, what was the question? how do bees see? So, well, well, they have compound eyes. Bees cannot see red. I had no idea. They, they can see, they see in an ultraviolet spectrum, which humans cannot. And bees um, can e easily distinguish between light and dark. So, good questions. They make they make me really look things up. All right. Another question was, how much honey do bees make in a year? And the answer they gave was 60 to 100 pounds. Which, so in theory, when you put your bees to bed in the winter. You give them this box and they should have, I don't have a frame that has it. So what they do is they make this arch filled with honey. It actually looks like a rainbow arch. They fill all the outside with honey and they leave the middle so they have a place to be. In theory, they should fill this box with 60 pounds of honey. And if you're a responsible beekeeper, you leave all that honey on there for them because they're gonna need that to eat during the winter, all right? So, typically, in a good year, we would get, and these are 40 pounds. When they fill these, they're 40 pounds. Typically, we would get at least two of these out of a hive. Um, so, Lexi's gonna come around with, so depending on what the bees eat, depends what color the honey is. So you can tell by the color of this that this is a spring honey. And this is a little, it's not really dark, so it's probably not a fall honey, but it's kind of in between. This honey is crystallized. So I wanted you to taste, has anybody tasted crystallized honey before? No. 
I wanted to taste that and get the texture. So Lex is going to come around and get you a taste of that. And then she's going to let you taste this too. So when I'm thinking about um, all the things that the bees give me, and of course we all know honey, right? That's the major thing. And honey never goes bad. It never spoils. It never spoils. Sometimes it gets crystallized like that, but then you just put it in some warm water and it ends up coming right back. The other thing the bees give me is comb. So my bees made this for me while they run in Madison. They typically don't make anything like this, so I'm so excited that they made this for me so I could show it to you. So I'm going to send it around, smell it, feel it. It's very, very delicate, very light. What do you use that for? What? Hmm? what do you use that for? Like, what does it do? I'll tell you. <laughs> um, so the only way I get wax is when I take the honey out after every, I, I only typically take mine out of the season. Some people take it out during different, um, uh, like spring, honey, and, you know, I just do it usually in October. I let them just stack up. So I take a knife and I take off the top layer of wax and the honey is inside these combs. So I only get a little bit of wax off of each of these frames. What? Oh, I want to show you this too. This is some wax that I got off and I have to render it, like put it, um, warm it up and put it through like a sieve to get rid of all the bad stuff the bees have left in there. Now look at the different colors of this. Again, depending on what the bees are eating, that's what color my wax is going to be. Mm. I use that wax to make hand lotion and candles and lip balm. Ooh. I know, right? I want these now. I want lotion and lip balm. <laughs> do you want to do the lotion now? Lexi's going to give you just a little bit of lotion. All organic. We had, it just has co organic coconut oil and um, beeswax. Like, don't don't eat the lotion. <laughs> Why not? Well, you could eat the lotion, but I, I don't think you want to. <laughs> yeah, so I sometimes feel kind of selfish because I think of all the things that my bees give me, and I'm like, oh, I hope I'm giving them enough back in return because I'm really lucky. So one of the also I want to let you know this says. 16 ounces of honey requires 1,152 bees to travel 112,000 miles and visit 4.5 million flowers. So, I mean, it's a lot of work, right? Um, how long does it take to make honey? The process takes about 45 days and each of the bees has a specific function. So it takes a lot of teamwork. Everybody has their job. How do you like it? Oh, I mean, smell it. If you smell it, I'm just gonna like, I'll get these now for lotion. So, has anybody gotten bit by a bee before? Yeah. Like what, stung or bee? Stung, I'm so sorry, stung by a bee. Is anybody afraid like of bees? Are they afraid of bees? Are you stuck with pet bees? So I want to think about the circumstances of when you got stung. Because I have never ever been stung by, well, I can't really say that. Once I stepped on a bee when I was barefoot. So, But typically when I go into my hives, nobody bothers me. But once in a while, you have a queen. So the hive, the, the um, personality of the hive is dictated by the queen. So every once in a while, you'll get a queen that's a little bit aggressive. And you'll know that as soon as you open up the hive because they do, they would just out at you. And I've had, only had a couple hives that have ever done that. Typically, they're very calm. Is that where the phrase queen bee comes from? What? Is that where that phrase queen bee comes from? <laughs> and then you just get rid of her and start over. <laughs> I my bee suit. So my bee suit is a little dirty now because when that bear came to town, you even know what the weather's like right now? Rainy. Yeah, oh, so I was like crawling around on the ground, picking up my bee suit. But this is my bee suit. Um, nasty it is. Blah. 
But um, back in the day, I had one that was just made out of canvas, and I, oh my gosh, I kept getting stung a lot. So this one is like interwoven. You can see the different layers. So now they can try to sting me, but it typically doesn't happen. And then these are my gloves, which are really, I think the most important part because, you know, that's the first thing that's gonna encounter the bees. Um, but as, as amazing as this suit is, they are so smart. You'll, you'll have this on here and they'll be trying to get up in there so they can sting you. Or your boots, for some reason, they'll just go around your boots. You gotta make sure everything's battened down. But that's typically only when you're you know, taking their honey. They're kind of bad day. Sometimes um, skunks get into the hive and then they're not very happy with you when you go to check on them. When that bear got in, it was, they were not happy for a long time. And I don't blame them at all. All right, anybody have any questions? are female. The drone only has one purpose in life. He is going to go out and mate with the queen. And then he's going to die. So, fun life. And um, there's always drones in the hive. But when, when winter comes, they kick all the drones out because they don't want to, their drones don't do anything. So they kick all the drones out so they don't have to feed them for the winter. That's a really good question. I like it. Wait, they just don't put your thumb. I have another question. Yeah. I have another question. Yeah. You know how you said, like, that sit inside? Yeah. Did they just stay in that one little crate? Mm -hmm. Or did they, like, fly from. Do they ever move? Like, do they go from space to space? You said, like, there's all of these. I don't know. These are all filled with bees. So do yep. they like interact? So, yeah, so this is going to look like this. And these bees are going to come, you know, there's, there's a hole here. They'll either come in the running board and they can, or this hole. They're just bringing in um, like poll pollen and nectar. They usually come in there to come because they're going to fill this up. All right. But yeah, they'll either be, most of them, when they're working, are up here because the brood is down here, and of course the nurse bees and things like that are down there work, working on those. So, did that answer your question? Yeah. They're all over the hive. So they're all over. They're, they're not like staying in one, you see when they're dead that they're like stuck in that one little space. They yeah, that's out. because they, yeah. That, they just crawled in, during the winter they crawled in there to stay warm, but obviously didn't serve them very well. Okay. All right, speaking of taking off honey, I wanted to share this with you. So over the years, you know, since I've been doing it so long, we've tried so many different ways when extracting the honey. First, we, um, back in the day, we used to take each frame, I can't believe we used to do this, it's craziness. We take every frame out and we go, brush, 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 take all the bees off, put it in a cooler real fast so the bees don't get back on. Can you imagine doing that for, each of these has 10 frames in it, so, 20 frames, 120 of those little things. Then we use something called a fume board where you spray it with a special fume and the bees don't like it, so they go out of the area. But I didn't like that because I didn't like spraying something for my bees to have to smell. This contraption is amazing because bees only take right turns. Did you know that? Really? They only turn right. So they all come into this and they'll go around and around and around till they go out of that hole back into the hive and they can't figure out how to get back up. So you just wait a couple days and all the bees go down and then you have your box of honey. Wait. So it looks like this. And the bees that are up here working in here, when they go out, they want to go out to get more propolis and nectar, and they can't get back in. Yep. So say you make a bee net, and they can only make returns, so just keep going left. Will that work? Well, 
what I, so, you know, like I said many times, usually when I'm doing, anyway, many times if, if the bees come out after you, like I've had that queen that's not nice, the guard bees come out. Guard bees are so persistent, so persistent. And they say that if you go, um, can distract their navigational system, that, that they'll leave you alone. So if you're ever in the situation where you have a bunch of bees that are running after you, which I hope never happens, because you know, bees don't really want to do that, go into shrubs or something hanging down because that will take away their navigation and they should leave you alone. So I, just want, I was gonna tell you a story about one time we, were, we did a swarm. Every year for a very long time in our barn, we have an area where we, a swarm would come in every spring. And on like 4th of July weekend, we always took it out, put it in a box. This one year, so, uh, sorry, I should tell you when, you, when you move bees, you always have to move them at least two miles away because their navigation is that good. If you took their box and moved it over a foot, they would just keep going to the place where the box should be. So we take this hive out. I have a special vacuum that I use to take it out. And I vacuum it all up and I put them inside something like this. And we brought them to our house in Madison because you got two miles away. We have done this so many times. We're so used to it. Take them out, shake them onto the thing, and they were mad. We didn't have our suits on, nothing. And I'll um, tell, tell you how good the guard bees were. We ran to the backyard, you know. Some people ran across the street and jumped into the lake just to get the bees to get off of us. And we finally made, all made it into the house. You could see the little guard bees outside on the window. They really wanted to come in. Waited about a half hour, didn't see any guard bees. It's pretty traumatic, didn't see any guard bees. So we decided we're really hungry, we're gonna go out to dinner. So we go to go out the door, there's those guard bees. So we run to the truck, close the doors, there's those guard bees, they're all after us. We're like, oh my God, go out to eat. Pull into the driveway. There with guard bees again. They are so persistent. They just done that. Hmm? I know. They're protective. They do their job, I guess, right? They do their job, I Anything else? Did you like the honey? Yeah. Yes. I like the not the other one, but the other one. Wait, who liked the crystallized stuff? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> So um, Lexi, I couldn't understand why Lexi didn't like my honey so much. And then I realized that she was eating a lot of McDonald's honey. And when I finally <laughs> tasted it, I realized, oh, that's fall honey. It tastes like fall honey. No wonder she doesn't like all this fluffy stuff I'm giving her. You know, she didn't like the spring honey. So there you go. All for her. Well, I think that's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in. Good job.